Tadi All right, good evening everyone, and thanks for tuning in to our parent session tonight. This is the third of three sessions that we're providing this week to our parents to explain the Cena Central Schools reopening plan and uh, you know, other information that uh, are necessary for you to know as we get ready to start school in the fall. So uh, tonight, I'll provide a presentation on our plan. We also will open it up for questions after that. Uh, to support uh, this this work tonight, we have an esteemed panel up here. Many of them that you see here are ones that have worked very hard, uh, among others, to help put this plan together. We have our director of curriculum here, Stephanie Allen, uh, Anne Marie Miller, who is our head nurse and also high school nurse, uh, and Alan Oliver, who is our junior high principal, and Monday will be our high school principal. He was the chair of our 7 through 12 instructional committee, and Dwayne Richards, who is our Jefferson principal, and also the pre K through 6 instructional subcommittee chair as well. And we have some other administrators here special education director of special services, Susan Lambert's here. And we're happy to have our IT guys, Josh Blair, Mike Allen, who are going to be taking your questions in just a little bit. So I think all of you know that uh, the governor last week announced that schools can reopen in the fall for in-person learning and based on uh, the school district's reopening plans. Uh, the Messina Central School District, like many around the state, on the 31st of July, uh, submitted our plan. It is on our webpage. We submitted it to the Department of Health as well as to the New York State Education Department. Uh, the night before of that, we presented it to the public uh, in a board meeting, and we had uh, um, over, 100, over 100 people that listened in and another 1,000 who watched it later. So people are uh, getting to know our plan. It is on our webpage along with an FAQ, and we're going to be posting a lot of other information there as well. We recognize that our parents and community have uh, many questions, uh, many concerns, as we try to open school in the midst of a coronavirus pandemic that since March has gripped our community in the, in the state and the nation and the world. Um, so it is a difficult task. We have a great uh, team here that's working with our, our, uh, our school and our families. So we know one thing, if we're going to do this successfully, we need to follow the New York State Department of Health guidelines. And much that you're going to see in this uh, review tonight uh, is based on those guidelines. We do have to follow the science here. So Stephanie, if you would, uh, I'm gonna just uh, click through the uh, PowerPoint to give you a, a bit of a, of a primer on our plan, and then we'll open it up for, for questions. Uh, first of all, I just want to acknowledge the many you see here on the screen uh, since March when we had to turn around our educational system in a week, and we know that the impact that that had on our families, the community, and our staff. Uh, it was challenging, but Messina did step up, up to the plate for that. Uh, we learned a lot from that time period. We'll use that uh, going forward, uh, but we had, uh, we really, our hats are off to all of you, our parents, uh, who have uh, supported this effort, supported your children, and will continue to do so. And we'll need that partnership as we go forward. We cannot do it without the support of our parents and parent groups. We're also working very closely with our other school districts, the BOCES, uh, and public health as well. For us to open, the governor made it very clear, we have to be in phase four and be following those metrics. What does that mean? It means that uh, our Infection rates in the county are 5% or less over 14 days. We are well below that, below 1% at this point. Um, it's, uh, last week we checked, there was a couple of active cases in the county uh, over in the Canton and Pierpont area. Uh, we must uh, also uh, have equipment available. Uh, PPE is dubbed and called, personal protection equipment like masks, ability to look at local surges, screening in place, training for our employees, and also a communication plan. 
Our guiding principles, first and foremost, is to keep our students and staff safe. That's at the front of our thinking and our planning. We also need to protect the students' right to learn, whether they're going to be learning from home or they're going to be learning here in the building. We'll monitor the COVID-19 in the community. We'll always emphasize, you'll see in some of our responses, we'll talk about equity and access, support for students. We'll continue to communicate with you. You'll see a lot more coming from us over the next couple of weeks as we continue to refine our plan and put schedules in place and other um, important procedures. And we'll also count for student social emotional well-being because that has, that has definitely taken a hit in many cases with the, with the, the events of the last uh, several months. But for any of this to work, it's going to take everyone following the, our operational foundations. Uh, we, we need both at home here at school that, that uh, we are teaching students how to frequently, that they're to frequently hand sanitize, hand wash, face coverings would be a good idea. I know Emory Miller, our nurse, has been saying to our parents, be sure that you're preparing students to come back to school. Show them how to wear a mask. Talk to them about, about hand sanitizing and hand washing. Talk to them about staying six feet away from, from others. And we'll also be uh, heightening, cleaning, and disinfecting in the schools. Our pillars surround transportation safety protocols, physical distancing, and learning. With our transportation, we will have less students on the bus. Many of our parents in the parent commitment form is, have stated that they'll be driving their students to school. We appreciate that. That takes some of the pressure off. When a child gets on the bus, they will need to have a face mask. It'll be one to a seat uh, unless they are with the same family and then they might be, then they'll have more to a seat. Um, we all also have used the transfer to this parent commitment form in order to be setting up our bus runs. Um, and we will see reduced ridership as we set up these plans. For safety protocols, masks will be worn at all times unless authorized for them to have a mask break during the day. Again, frequent hand washing and hand sanitizing. We will be limiting visitors to the school. And if parents come to the school, they will need to be uh, screened as well when they, they come in. We will be providing uh, a lot of training, training to our um, training resources to our parents, to our staff, to our school. We've lengthened the number of days for training for our staff at the beginning of this year. There'll be four instead of two uh, in order to accomplish this. And we've uh, started the physical distancing process in our rooms, in our cafeterias, in our other spaces. And we'll talk more in number four about our learning models that uh, they'll come up later with the models, the high in-person hybrid and remote learning. Uh, early on, we set up a reopening plan committee that includes all of our stakeholders. This is the wider committee. It meets uh, on a weekly basis and then it has subgroups. These subgroups you see on the screen, uh, they've been led by our key leaders. They've included parents and, and staff and faculty. Um, and they're the ones who have been working and putting this plan together. We've now pivoted a lot of that work to the buildings because now that we have a plan in place, we have to make sure that it works in the detail that occurs at the building level. So let me take a moment and talk about screening uh, because that's an important one and our thinking has evolved on this issue. So screening will be done in two parts. Um, we are going to provide a screening app, a tool for our parents. Because we do expect every morning before a child comes to school, just as they get breakfast, just as they prepare uh, and wash and dress for, dress for school, they will also have to take one more step, and that is to, fit, to go on an app and screen themselves. That will include a temperature check that we'll need to have a thermometer at home to make sure their temperature is below 100, that they make sure that they're symptom free, uh, and they'll have to answer questions about whether they've been in close proximity to someone who has been tested for COVID or have symptoms of COVID or they've been tested for COVID or if they travel to a state that's on the list of the travel advisor. Um, if the student answer uh, or the parent for the student answers uh, uh, no to all those questions, then they can come to school. If they answer yes, then they should remain home and contact the school. 
Secondly, uh, when, when the child and the staff gets to school, they will be screened there with temperature as well. We will have temperature screeners and all of our staff and our students as they come in will be screened. So it's a double, it's for our safety, it's for their safety. We will uh, have that screening that takes place. And through the app, we will know who has not been screened and will need to be flagged. So let me talk now about the options for instruction. Really, we're talking about number two and three on this list, hybrid learning and remote learning, because unfortunately, we are not able to bring all students back to school. Uh, Department of Health has put down clear social distancing, uh, and we do not have the capacity either on our buses or in our physical facilities to be able to bring all students back and appropriately social distance and keep them safe. So we are looking at a hybrid and remote model. I've, uh, so this is partly how it will look, this is the pre-K model, but all students will have what's called Digital Monday. This is not a day off from school, this student will be doing work uh, online, it will largely look like, more like what you saw from March to, to June, except we, we haven't learned a lot from that instruction and we are enhancing that remote instruction but that's what Monday will look like. The reason we're looking at that, that type of model is because we do need time um, for, our, for our staff uh, for cleaning. We need, room, we need time for professional development, for training, for collaboration, because we're asking more of our staff on these different models. Um, we also, it's a break, it's one more day we don't have students in. It's one more less risk of a day uh, in the school. Now for, so that's for everybody on Monday. Now, uh, for kindergarten on Monday in the off days, they won't be online. They'll be doing an at-home extension activity that the teacher will provide. Uh, for pre-K, they will have uh, an AM and PM session uh, broken out in kind of an A and B. So A's, if you're in the A group, um, you will come to school, F to, FTF means face-to-face, -face. so the blue means that's when you're in school. So if your child is in an A group, they will be in school on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and on those other days, they will have an at-home instructional activity. If your child's in the B group, you can see in the blue, they'll be in school on Wednesdays and Fridays. For kindergarten, uh, Kindergarten is normally a full day instruction. Uh, for our purposes here, for similar reasons, we will have the digital Monday, with, um, and then we will have an AM and a PM group. So kindergartners will go, if they're in the A group, they will go to, um, to school in the morning, and then we'll become, come home midday. And then we'll pick up the B group, and they'll be in the afternoon. So kindergarten is an A and B, at a.m. And, and p.m., much like we have normally with our kindergartners in, when we're not in the midst of the pandemic. First and second grade, these are our beginning readers. Uh, we felt it was very important that they be in school every day. We, with those who have chosen to stay home, we are able to have a full day for the rest of the students. So they will have that digital Monday like everyone else but all of the students who have chosen for in-person learning, all of those first and second graders will be in school with their teacher Tuesdays through Fridays. For all the rest of the grades, three through 12, they'll have the digital Monday, and they'll then be split into A and B groups as well. So A groups will be coming in on Tuesdays and Thursdays face-to-face. -face. On the opposite days, they'll be doing largely, they may be doing some synchronous learning, means they will see what's going on in the classroom with the teacher. They'll be following that teacher's the normal schedule, like they were in their face-to-face, -face, but remote learning, or they may be doing some asynchronous, which means that they'll be doing some activities without, without being face-to-face -face with that classroom. On Wednesdays, the B students will be in, as well as Fridays and the off days, I should say off days, on the days that they're not face-to-face, -face, they will be doing, expected to do work uh, digitally. Now for some of our other students, uh, these would be students who have uh, more uh, um, complex learning needs, could be some of our uh, special education students, could be some of our struggling 
readers who are or math uh, students who are tier three, we would be having them come in every day. It's also important to note that um, our Seaway Tech students, 11 through 12, who go to Seaway Tech, OCs, they will be going to cl classes over there five days a week, as will any of our special education students who go off campus, uh, most often to Potsdam, will be five days a week, and we will provide that transportation for them. And then we have our students who are all remote instruction, and that's for families who decided to keep their students home. Uh, we will have uh, a remote instruction that will follow our digital day and our AD hybrid schedule. Um, they will have a full remote learning experience, um, and you will have an opportunity if you choose uh, if you chose a remote and you decide after the first quarter you'd like to send your child to school, we will um, uh, revisit uh, at the 10 week mark. However, at any time, if a, if a parent who is sending their child to school now wants to go remote, that can be um, accommodated. We know from our survey or parent commitment form, we have about 24% at this point of our students throughout the district who would be remote instruction. Special services, I largely mentioned already, we will continue to provide uh, special services, including speech, counseling, OT, and PT, um, although some of that will be remote. And social emotional learning, we know this has been a difficult time for our families, for our students, and our staff. We are going to have a program called Raiders Together Initiative, where we will address the needs of our students, uh, that will include some training for faculty and staff on, on assisting students who need that support, a needs assessment for students uh, to, um, to identify and assist them if they need extra support for mental health. We'll provide some live and virtual counseling. We'll provide um, access to resources both within the school and outside of the school um, in order to promote their wellness. That's, that's critically important. In terms of digital access, we will once again be providing Chromebooks to our students. We'll have hotspots in the community to access for those who don't have internet, and we're working with the local OCs to try to um, finalize a plan for those who do not have internet services. Food service will continue. Most of our in-person food service will like, largely be in the classroom for social distancing purposes. Students will come in through the line, get a grab and go. It can be a hot lunch, cold lunch. We'll still provide the same nutritional meal. Um, for those who are remote on Mondays, we will have the will they will be able to pick up um, food at the high school. Uh, we will provide further information on that later. Uh, if they're fully remote, it can be a five-day meal pack. If they are um, on the AB schedule, we can provide a three-day meal pack. The difference this time is that. Uh, from March to all throughout this, even the summer, we're still doing it. Um, families have been able to just pick it up and go. Uh, we've been able to ask, provide this to any family who wanted it. Unfortunately, that waiver from the U.S. Department of Agriculture is expired, and now we can only provide that those meals to those who are qualified uh, for free and reduced lunch. Um, except if a family wants to pay for the meal packs, they can do so if they are not on the free and reduced lunch list. I would say that if someone now feels they should have filled out a free and reduced lunch packet, um, that is still available if they want to see if they qualify. Athletics, uh, you know, this has uh, been very difficult on our athletes. Uh, missed their spring season, um, and our hockey team was not able to go to the States, uh, but that continues to be a concern for us. Uh, now the the uh, delay of the fall season is until September 21st. We expect to hear more about that in the coming weeks. Uh, the championship, both regionally and at the state level, have been uh, canceled for the for the for the fall, and we'll continue to monitor that uh, and provide information. The, uh, the state has put out some possibilities that we could have some shortened seasons um, starting in January. You see them on the screen, winter, fall, and spring, but uh, at this point that's subject to change and we'll, we'll just have to monitor that for our athletes. Athletics is obviously very important to our, our community and our culture, and this is, a, this is also very tough. 
I've talked quite a bit about our facilities. We, we have been purchasing uh, PPE. We've purchased about 12,000 masks to start the school year. We have some for children, for adults. Uh, we've also been uh, uh, working on our um, installing barriers in, in the air, high traffic areas, like around secretaries, food service. Been looking at our HDAC equipment, um, transforming uh, areas into isolation areas as needed, and doing more cleaning and disinfecting. And so finally, our uh, next steps uh, are we're going to continue our reopening committee continues to meet. We met three for three hours yesterday. We're going to continue to meet with subgroups meeting uh, to prepare for the opening. And we're going to be you're going to see a lot more communication coming out with scheduling and other procedures as as we get closer to school starting. And uh, as I said, our conference day is on the 1st through the 4th of September, and then we would expect students to start on the 8th of September. So that's a run through um, on our plan. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of other questions related to this, uh, and we'll open the floor. Okay. One more question, uh, Dr. Sanchez. How many do we have online? I know we've been answering a lot over the last uh, couple of days. But we'll, we'll stay on for and see if there's other questions. So we won't be able to, this, uh, during this start of the school year into the pandemic, to provide lockers because it wouldn't allow for social distancing. So we are going to relax our book bag policy and allow students to bring their book bags to school. Will there be a high school orientation for the new ninth graders? I believe there is. Uh, yeah, I, I, I forgive you for being new in the tradition. Yeah. I believe they're working on it as a virtual event and a way to contact through distance, but I'm actually not quite up to speed on that yet myself. Yeah. Um, 
So I know that uh, Mr. Jordan and the Link crew, uh, they have trained the upperclassmen to do the orientation. Uh, and uh, so I think there'll be more information coming on that. Um, maybe we'll park that question. Yeah, I think there is, but I don't want to say that there is and um, heighten expectations, but I do believe there's something going on. Will there be staggered drop-off times for the high school students that are being brought in by the parents? There isn't going to be, there isn't a plan to have staggered drop-off times, but we are going to have someone monitoring the doors for proper social distancing. Uh, when the buses come up, we will have, uh, they will be staggered in terms of uh, when the bus, the bus drivers let the students off the bus so we can keep a steady but social distant line into the school. Uh, so there'll be somebody out front monitoring that. The parents can come up and drop their children off in front. When will we know if our child is in group A or group B? Will there be instruction for the first day of school before that day? Yeah, they're working on the schedules now. Uh, Dwayne, you want to take that one? Yeah, so uh, elementary schedules, we're, we're waiting for the, uh, the last bits of information to come in, and that's the transportation piece. So the, the uh, each grade level model is in place. We uh, are waiting to make sure that um, we can't overload an A day or a B day with, uh, with students. So as soon as we get that information from Mr. Rowledge and the bus garage, we'll be able to, to finalize um, those hybrid schedules. That's if the students are at grades three through six, and if they're at uh, K through two, they're, they're going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday anyways. Uh, my best guesstimate, and I've conferred with the other two elementary principals, that we're shooting to have those finalized by mid-ish of next week and um, and have them out to parents by the end of the week next week. And secondary? Um, we're doing many of the same things and working through the same variables that Mr. Richards just did, described. Uh, except at the secondary level, we have the complication of students moving between periods and moving from teacher to teacher. Uh, we're working on all of those variables as well. At, at the junior high level, we'll be doing probably some more cohorting or leaving the students in rooms that are going to be able to in the high school. Um, but nonetheless, it's going to be quite a bit of work to get through all of that. I would expect we're probably a couple of weeks away from schedules at this point at the secondary level. Okay. Mr. Brady, there were some other parts to that. The, uh, we certainly will get instructions uh, for the first day of school L. I meeting what and I know the other district or the elementary schools are planning this. We're meeting with our building opening teams to develop. Uh, as you can imagine, we we have the drop off and pick up protocols that are going to look very different. So we're going to uh, putting that in place. We'll get that that information will follow up on the uh, this the student placements, which we're hoping to get out next week. When we send out the student placements. AB day next week, we'll also send out a supply list with them as well as put them in, in the stores. And there's a, another part, what are the hours of a normal school day? It'll be the same at the elementary school again. It'd be 8.20 would be the drop off and uh, three o'clock would be ish, would be um, the, the end of the school day. Uh, some of the directions for the first day of school will involve uh, we're, we're not going to be able to have parents coming into the into the schools when they drop off those young students but we're going to uh, certainly over accommodate by having readers to to help with that transition and we're expecting with the the screening that we're going to be doing as students arrive that may push our our, our ordinarily we would start our morning announcements probably about 8 45 that's going to push that so we'll just we'll accommodate the stuff that we have to do and then hopefully get more proficient at that as the, the year goes on and be able to shorten that that time but um, we'll play it play it safe and slow at the beginning but we certainly will that's what the the uh, now that we're, we're i feel that we've gotten by in all of the elementary schools a major hurdle of of finally getting the commitment forms back. We needed those commitment forms uh, so that we could develop 
you know, who's going to be here and who's going to be teaching remote. So we can assign the teachers and then um, after uh, we had to do some phone phone calling to, uh, to get the rest of those, that's why we spent this week getting the, the classes assigned. Um, I think we're going to be in, in uh, we've, we've been concentrating on that piece. Now with that finalized, we can shift our focus to the nitty gritty things. And uh, our goal is to, uh, to make sure that the students, staff, and the parents are all comfortable with that, in that procedure. The other point I will make is uh, at, at the, uh, the secondary level, uh, we will have the same start time. I'm talking 7 to 12. Uh, we will likely uh, have to lengthen the time as students come in or shorten the, shorten the schedule a little bit, both for the screening, temperature screening, as well as some cleaning uh, of classrooms in between periods. Uh, the other important note I think there is that our after we will not have a three o'clock bus, um, so students would not be staying after school. Um, so st all students would be going home on the um, on the two fifteen bus. Last question. Last question. Well, I know there'll be other questions that are going to come up uh, as, as we go through this, and I would ask parents don't hesitate to reach out, and you can uh, you know, contact uh, us, contact your building principal. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we have still had, we've got a good plan in place, but we're, we still are refining it as we go through. You'll, we will receive more information uh, as we go forward, and we thank everybody for tuning in tonight. We know this is very important, and we will keep you posted. You know, one more question. Okay. Yeah, that's come up. We're look, we parked that one. We're, we'll get back on the latch key. I need to. Uh, I need to see whether we're going to be able to pull that off or not. So we'll get more information out soon on the latch key.